When it comes to subcompact SUVs, it doesn't get much better than a Subaru Crosstrek. This model has essentially been the epitome of what consumers are looking for when they want to buy an urban-sized, all-weather-capable SUV, and it really shows in the sales figures. Subaru managed to sell around 155,000 Crosstreks in America last year, making this the best-selling Subaru and the best-selling vehicle in the subcompact SUV segment. Now, as you guys know, Subaru has given the Crosstrek a full redesign for 2024. It's now in its third generation. It's built on the same Subaru global product architecture. It has new styling, front and rear. It has some new trim levels, and it also has has much better technology versus the prior generation. Now, I already had a chance to drive this vehicle out in California three months ago. However, as you can see this week, Subaru has loaned me this Crosstrek Premium, which essentially means it's in the middle of the trim hierarchy. It also comes standard with a two liter naturally aspirated four, uh, symmetrical all wheel drive and up to 29 MPG combined. So if you guys own the old Crosstrek or you're simply looking for a new small SUV, has Subaru made enough changes to keep the Crosstrek among the best in the segment? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the updated styling on the redesigned Crosstrek, I thought I'd pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this thing. Now, Subaru continues to offer a choice of two different powertrains. They used to offer a plug-in hybrid. However, that has been discontinued. The model that I'm showing you here has the smaller two-liter naturally aspirated flat four. Now, Subaru offers the Crosstrek in five different trims. The base and the premium that I'm showing you here are the models that are built in Japan because they have the company's smaller two liter naturally aspirated boxer flat four with direct injection. It makes the same power as the previous generation, 152 horsepower and 145 pound feet of torque. The manual transmission has been discontinued for this new third gen. I'm sorry to say that it's gone. In its place is the company's updated Lineartronic CVT, which Subaru says is smoother, more responsive, and quieter. Fuel economy is rated at 27 in the city, 34 on the highway. That's regardless of the base or the premium trim. Keep in mind, if you guys go for the 2.5 engine in the Sport and the Limited and the Wilderness trim, that will offer you up to 178 horsepower, so, or 100, uh, so or some 175 horsepower and 178 pound-feet of torque. That's, again, going to give you an extra 30 horsepower. Uh, it all goes out through a that CVT with symmetrical all-wheel drive as standard. Uh, towing capacity, Subaru says, is around 1,500 pounds. They don't quote a zero to 60 performance, but we'll, we have our testing equipment. We'll see what we can actually get in the real world. And as this vehicle sits, it weighs in at just under 3,300 pounds. So it's actually pretty light among its segment. Now, closing the hood, let's go ahead and talk about the exterior styling of the all-new Crosstrek. Now, as you guys know, Subaru tends to be pretty conservative with their redesigns, and that's kind of reflected here in the Crosstrek. You can instantly recognize this vehicle as a Crosstrek, and it has, of course, the company's latest styling language with their hexagonal grille, which has become frameless. It's also larger. The premium has kind of this, like, gray trim. In the actual grille, these openings are a little bit larger to allow more air to pass through. You also have some functional openings here. A lot of cladding on the vehicle, which as you can see moving around over here to the bumper, this was a slightly controversial piece right here, but it's grown on me. My particular tester is called an offshore blue metallic. It's kind of got some metallic fleck. It looks grayish blue, but more uh, blue in the sunlight. You can see all cross treks now come standard with full adaptive steering LED headlights. Even on the base trim, you also get LED fogs on this premium trim, which is a nice addition. The turn signals you can see are incandescent. The daytime running light is actually just the actual headlight where it comes on in a lower intensity. Um, overall, it's nice that Subaru made LED headlights as standard, and this vehicle certainly has a more modern, more rugged appearance to it. Now, moving around the side profile, Subaru essentially kept the platform the same. It's their global product architecture. Its wheelbase is still the same at 105.6. Its overall length at 176.4 is about a half an inch longer, but it has the same width around 70.9 inches, and the height has been dropped by about a half an inch to 63 inches in height. You still have the same 8.7 inches of ground clearance. You can see there's also more of that cladding with some functional openings there that allow for air to pass through. And you can see the premium trim comes with these 17-inch graphite gray machine two-tone uh, wheels riding on a 225 
by 65 or by 60 R17 Yokohama Geolander tires. The brake rotors, all disc all around. You have a 12.4 inch disc in the front, an 11.2 inch disc at the rear. You have an all independent suspension, but no adaptive dampers. Like I said earlier, 8.7 inches of ground clearance. That increases to 9.3 if you guys go for the Wilderness trim, which is technically not on sale yet. I'll be driving that later this summer. Now you can see the premium and the limited trims come with this gray painted side mirror. The base has a black unpainted mirror while the sports have a black mirror. The, um, the integrated turn signals also are a nice touch. These are not power folding. The premium also includes the raised roof rails. All the other cross track trims have this except for the wilderness. It has a slightly different look. The sunroof is an extra $2,300, part of a package that my tester has. There's no chrome on the vehicle. You can see a lot of that cladding to give you more of that rugged SUV feel and look to the exterior. And then coming around the rear, I really do like this exterior color. You have the updated LED taillights, which is kind of like an LED combination. You can see the turn signal and the reverse light is incandescent the brake light has like an LED accent to it. There's still a rear window wiper, a small little subtle spoiler on the back, and then Subaru tends to go a little overboard with their badging. You can see it says Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive along with a Crosstrek badge. No blacked out badging, and you can see down in the rear skirt, there's no uh, visible exhaust tips, but again, the rear bumper area I think is pretty clean. Subaru kept the cladding a little bit more tasteful back here, so I think the design kind of works. Now, sadly, Subaru does not offer a power lift gate on any version of the Crosstrek. It kind of helps keep the cost down. Uh, and then in terms of the cargo area, it's practically the same. You have just under 20 cubic feet back here at 19.9. I like the uh, floor mat, the cargo floor mat that it comes with. Underneath here, there is a temporary spare tire uh, with the jack and whatnot, all the tools that you need. If you fold down the second row seats, uh, it expands the cargo to just under 55 cubic feet, like 54.7. It's among the bigger in the segment. It's certainly very usable, and it's one of the reasons why a lot of people enjoy their Crosstrek, because it's the right size on the outside, and it's the right size on the inside. So let's go ahead and talk about the interior of the all new third generation Crosstrek. However, before we get inside, let me first show you guys the key fob. You can see here is Subaru's current fob. This is their intelligent access key, which you get a standard when you guys go for the premium trim as an up. So if you guys don't get, if you get the base, you won't have their intelligent access key with push button start. You'll have a traditional key uh, where you have to stick into the ignition. Again, one of the reasons why I highly recommend going for the premium. Now you can see the door handles are very traditional. There's a little two ridge area here. When you touch that, that locks the door for you. When you touch the back of the door, that's what unlocks the door for you. Subaru does not do an, an auto walk away lock feature like some manufacturers. So I would highly recommend uh, Subaru eventually adding that little touch. But opening up the door, you can see my tester here uh, it has the offshore blue exterior color with the premium cloth material that you get with the premium trim. Now there's only one color option basically. It's kind of like a black, gray, and like almost like a yellow contrast insert in the actual seats themselves with contrast gray stitching. Uh, my tester has an optional eight-way power driver's seat that's part of that uh, $2,300 option package that my tester also has that also includes two-way heated seats. If you're looking for ventilated seats, memory seats, the Crosstrek doesn't offer that. Remember this is on the low end of the totem pole and Subaru's hierarchy. The door panel material you can see has more of that cloth material. Hard touch plastic here, some carbon fiber look trim, padded area over here, and then the window controls one touch up down for the front, however not for the rear. Would have liked to see Subaru do one touch for all four. Window controls, they feel relatively nice and clicky. Hard touch plastic over here. Now once I get inside, you can see the step in height is nice and high, like an SUV because of that nearly nine inches of ground clearance. As I shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. The Subaru global, global product architecture is a great platform, of course, to start with. Now, start stop button is right here. It's kind of blocked by the wheel. Push that, you can see the gauges do a nice little sweep. You have a small three and a half millimeter helper display in the center. And then if you guys go for the premium trims and up, like I said earlier, you get the big 11.6 inch display, which includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can see my phone has already synced up, which is nice. If you guys go for the base trim, you have two seven inch displays with a inter with like a plastic area between the two screens. Just doesn't look as good as this display, although I will say Subaru software still needs an upgrade, but it's nice to see that the screen graphics are okay 
and they now finally added wireless capability for the smartphone integration. Now you can see the steering wheel. This steering wheel is kind of getting a little bit old. It's still the same steering wheel from a lot of the Subarus like the Outback, which we've seen for a few years. I don't like how the premium trim also doesn't include the leather wrapped wheel. This is the urethane plastic material, which I don't love the way this feels, especially at this price point. You have paddles on the wheel, which is included when you guys go for the premium trims and up. You have steering wheel controls for your audio, for the Drew Subaru EyeSight feature. This is your drive mode selector. There's a sport mode and then there's an intelligent mode. Intelligent is the normal. This is the sport driving mode. We'll talk about that later on in the driving scene. The horn. Sounds a little puny uh, and a little minuscule, so I don't love the way the horn sounds. Um, dashboard materials, you can see our hard touch plastic. This, however, is soft touch where it kind of extends to this area. However, these two are hard touch plastic. This is also hard touch, more of that carbon fiber and faux aluminum look trim. Uh, and then this right here is also hard touch plastic. The uh, center console here you can see my tester does not have a wireless phone charging pad you can get that as a dealer accessory this is this is essentially where it would be my iphone 14 pro max fits quite nicely over there you still have co regular controls here like two vo uh, knobs where you have for volume and for tuning you have your actual buttons here to control the dual zone climate control which is actually standard on every trim dual zone automatic climate control is standard on even the base trim which is definitely nice however if you guys um notice there's still some climate functions that are built into the screen and I will say that there are times where I start this vehicle up the screen is a little bit laggy on startup to pull up the climate so that's something to keep in mind uh, I don't like how you know the software needs a little bit of a hardware or processor boost uh, there now you can see the carplay screen is a nice size it takes up most of the real estate here this area here is part of like the little eyebrow display where you can change the way that looks you can turn on and off your subaru x mode when you guys are off-roading it's a software-based off-road system that adjusts the traction control and the torque vectoring of course to get you unstuck um, but overall this system here is fine it looks good but subaru just needs a, a slight upgrade in the processing speed and the power uh, behind the actual screen the center console here i don't love the way this shifter looks in this this area it looks plasticky it looks dated this shifter looks like it was pulled out of a subaru from 15 years ago but it's a very traditional uh gauge or i'm sorry gear lever uh, with an actual you know mechanical linkage versus an electronic dis uh, electronic shifter some of you may, may prefer that. The heated seat controls, you can see, look like they were pulled out of a Subaru from 20 years ago. Uh, and you also notice when you turn on the heated seats, it stays in that position even when you shut the vehicle off. So kind of remember that that's the off position. You'll see an LED indicator light when this is on. You have an electronic parking brake here. You have your cup holders. You have a uh, 12 volt power outlet. And then you can see here, the premium trims will include a USB a and a USB uh, C and a USB A and an aux port. The base trim won't have that USB C dongle. Uh, this right here doesn't adjust forward and it's kind of covered in a cheap material. I would have liked to see this covered in cloth, but you can see open that up. It's a relatively decent size, a little bit more storage over here. Uh, and the storage solutions in this vehicle are actually quite decent. Now the stereo system, you have a six speaker Subaru sound system in this car, which is two more than the base, but keep in mind if you want the Harman Kardon 10 speaker, you have to go for the limited trim and get the option package. It's a decent audio, but if you're an audiophile, you're again, wanna go, you're gonna wanna step up to the limited grade to get that. Uh, the glove compartment, you can see it's actually big. All my camera stuff fits in there. It's a bin style, it's damped, but not lined with felt. The seats are comfortable and supportive. I actually like the cloth material, but if you want leather, you have to go for the limited. That's the only trim to give you leather seats versus cloth on all the other trims. Uh, but the cloth at least is a high quality feeling fabric. No auto dimming rear view mirror and no digital camera rear view mirror. You do have some incandescent bulbs for the map lights. No LED lighting in this vehicle. It's again pretty low on the totem pole. You can see the sunroof traditional. It tilts and it also opens completely but it's not a pano roof. Subaru doesn't offer that on the cross track nor do they offer things like a heads up display. Um, but Everything else is nice from the visibility, from the average to decent materials to the above average amount of space. Uh, that's kind of what helps sell people on a cross track. You can see out of the vehicle really well and you can also find that there's plenty of room. But let's go ahead and hop into the back seat of this vehicle because the cross track also has a pretty decent sized back seat. Once I open the door, you can see Subaru says 36 and a half inches of leg room, which is actually three more inches versus the Corolla Cross Hybrid. You can see materials back here are hard touch plastic, but it's padded here where your elbows would rest nice little area where uh, you can put your smartphone here or use as a grab handle. The seats also, they do fold down in a 60-40 manner. It creates almost a completely flat floor when you fold down the seats, which is also nice. The same cloth material is kind of carried over into the back seat. But once I get back here, you can see the 
Legroom is actually really good. There's a penny in there, so that was the rattle that you heard. Uh, good foot space underneath here. There is a hump that intrudes on the middle passenger, uh, but for somebody my height at five foot seven, I can get back here, I can cross my legs. The headroom space is also decent. My head, even when I sit back, doesn't actually come to the roof of the vehicle, which is nice, although the sunroof, as you can see, does take up some of that space. You have basically an incandescent light back here as well. No rear seat air vents, but you do have two USB charging ports, a C and an A, which is nice. You have one storage pocket, and then you can see here, if you guys, again, go for the premium trim, it includes this armrest here with a nasty tissue stuck in there um, that folds down with two cup holders. The base doesn't have that feature. Uh, and then you can see here the seats themselves. They don't recline, but again, they just kind of fold down. This is what it looks like when it's folded down here on this side. You can see almost completely flat floor. So that's another reason why Subaru does a really good job here. But overall, the back seat can easily accommodate adults to car seats. It has a surprising amount of room, and it's one of the reasons why families love the Crosstrek because it offers a ton of space on the inside, but a nice small footprint on the outside. So here we are back in the fully redesigned 2024 Subaru Crosstrek. Remember, the last time I drove this vehicle, I was actually out in California about three, almost four months ago. Uh, and this is a very important vehicle for Subaru because as you guys know, this vehicle was the best-selling subcompact SUV in the US last year in 2022. It's also Subaru's best-selling model in their North American portfolio. So obviously, when you have such success, you're not gonna wanna mess too much with the formula. And now that we have the Crosstrek two liter premium for a full week, we're gonna live with the car for a full week. We're gonna see what it's like to just own this vehicle or retest the fuel efficiency. Uh, and this is the model that uh, is built in Japan. Basically the base and the two liter engines are built in Japan. The Sport and Limited are built in the uh, USA because of the two five liter engine. At just under 30 grand, this represents a nice sweet spot in the middle ground of the hierarchy for the Crosstrek. Although I'd argue that for not much more, you can go to a sport or a premium or a, lim a limited trim with an additional 30 horsepower, and it could be worth that additional jump. But when I first zero to 60 tested this vehicle, it got a little over 10 seconds with Rob in the car, with all of our stuff. Uh, we were at an area that I don't really know. So let's go ahead and see what we can get on our usual home stretch of roads here. It's in sport mode. We're gonna brake torque it. It felt quick-ish off the line, but boy, does it fall on its face afterwards. Nine point four two seconds there. Now that time is about a half a second faster versus what I got for this vehicle out in California. And I will say that it is slow, but it is still a good deal quicker than something like the Honda HRV or even the base Corolla Cross with the non-hybrid powertrain. Nine point four obviously is not great. Um, but it's certainly respectable. This vehicle, its strengths is not in its zero to 60 time. I do that for just testing purposes, uh, which I'll talk about later on uh, as we go on through the driving scene for this video, just to talk about how it drives in the real world. But uh, overall, it's got decent pep. Remember, we only have 152 horsepower here. That's not a lot of power and only 145 pound-feet of torque. So you're gonna be dipping into the throttle a lot if you guys do a lot of highway driving or you need to pass slow-moving vehicles. Let's try it here though. I'm not gonna brake torque at this time. Wow, the auto start stop was really slow there when it shut off, but let's try it again. I'm gonna turn off the auto start stop. We're just gonna floor it. This car feels quick-ish initially. It's all the way Subaru's tuned the CVT. It holds its revs right there, keeps holding it. Come on, 10.4 here without brake torquing it uh, on a slightly more incline. So we'll try it one more time on our third run and this time it'll be on a more level surface without brake torquing it. But in realistically, I'm gonna say this car will realistically do 10 seconds in the real world. Um, just in everyday driving, which is slow. Is it unacceptable? Yes and no. I mean, sometimes it's all about the feel. I mean, the people who buy cross treks in general, they don't care about that kind of stuff. They care about smoothness. They care about refinement. Uh, they care about ride quality. They care about features and tech and off-road capability. And this is where the cross trek really does well in that regard because um, the CVT in this vehicle is their latest version of their Linear Tronic. It's smoother, it's quieter. Subaru has improved the noise, vibration, and harshness with the engine. It has new balance shafts, it has new engine mounts, 
mounts and it's just, it's smooth. This vehicle's engine is so much less grainy and raspy and unrefined as the prior generation Crosstrex. You know, even though when you get the engine up in its higher rev band, it definitely has that traditional sound and feel of buzziness, but most of the times I put my foot down here, the CVT will automatically downshift to a lower ratio. It actually does mimic shifts as well. And the vehicle feels peppy, and that's kind of where most people are gonna be fooled, because most people aren't gonna be doing what I'm doing here. You're just gonna be driving it to and from work to do your errands, to go on longer road trips. And this is where, again, the Crosstrek really excels. We'll put our foot down here. You can actually feel the torque transfer. Their symmetrical all-wheel drive system just puts the power down. You can see in normal driving, you can hear the CVT is mimicking shifts and it just gets up to speed perfectly fine. It's acceptable. Um, now granted, for an extra 30 or 3,000 bucks, you could get 30 more horsepower, which I'm looking forward to driving the Crosstrek 2.5 for a longer period. I tested that powertrain in an Impreza recently and that did it about two seconds faster, zero to 60 wise. So let's just try it here again really quick, one more time. Didn't brake torque at this time. I'm still in sport. Gosh, I hope I have enough road to get to 60 here. This is bad. <laughs> 9.2 there, actually. So a little bit faster, actually, surprisingly. So it doesn't make a difference whether you brake torque this powertrain or not. You're going to be doing in the you know low nines to 10 seconds, zero to 60 for a vehicle like this, which enough of that because most people, again, aren't going to do that for you know, when they drive a cross track. But overall, I'm gonna switch the drive mode here back into in intelligent eye mode. Um, in sport mode, which I had it in earlier, it's constantly holding the revs a little bit longer. In this mode, which is actually how I drive the cross track mode, like in my weeks worth of testing, this is how I drove it. I just left it in eye mode. I let it do, I let it shift on its own and do about its own business. And this is where the car handles really well. The steering on this vehicle is electric. It's got the new dual pinion power assisted steering from the WRX and it's perfectly acceptable. The suspension is definitely soft. These economy minded tires are more for, again, fuel efficiency. Uh, and the Crosstrek is not a sporty vehicle. There's also a Crosstrek Sport, which honestly, I, from remembering it on my first drive last month, it wasn't all that sporty to drive. It just was quicker, uh, which was a nice thing to have the extra power. Visibility is one of the, again, Crosstrek's strong suit. You can see out of the front really well. The view at visibility out of the side's good. The view out of the back is good. Uh, Subaru doesn't offer their digital camera review mirror, but my tester has the eyesight. Driver assist tech is standard with the dual cameras. My tester also has the blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, which is optional. It's part of a package that my tester has for an additional 2,300 bucks and it works fine. The adaptive cruise also works really well at keeping you in the lane, uh, following the car in front of you at a safe distance, although it leaves too much of a gap for my taste where people actually cut you off on the highway, which is kind of annoying. But this vehicle is also quiet. I took it on a longer road trip and it glides down the highway with refinement and comfort that Crosstrex used to not have. The ride is comfortable. The seats are also comfortable. These are the premium cloth seats that you get with the premium trim and they're good. They're great on long distances. I like the fact that you have an eight-way power driver's seat with a two-way lumbar, but no memory seats. The steering wheel, I will say, I don't like the non-leather wrapped wheel on this trim. It's got that cheap urethane material. You can't get a leather wrapped wheel on this trim. You have to at least step up to a sport. Subaru should have included that on this trim especially at this price point. And then in terms of the fuel efficiency, this is where the Crosstrek is also a winner. Uh, even though this vehicle is not a hybrid, which imagine if Toyota gave Subaru their hybrid tech with this powertrain. In my week's worth of testing, I averaged a little over 30 MPG. That's right, in city mixing, city highway mixed driving, I got a little over 30 miles to the gallon. That's slightly better than the EPA's combined rating of 29. Um, on the highway, I saw about 33 MPG. So not quite as good as the 34, but still excellent fuel efficiency. However, keep in mind, a Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid competitor of this vehicle, I got about 42 to 44 MPG without even trying. So that vehicle will do easily 10 miles to the gallon more than the Crosstrek. Uh, so again, imagine if Subaru just did an, uh, a hybrid version of the Crosstrek 
But uh, with that bigger 16.6 gallon gas tank, this vehicle was easily doing 450 miles on a full tank. Now, I will also say that the trip computer is a little overzealous. It uh, liked to say when I first got this vehicle that it was 580 miles of range, which as soon as I started driving the vehicle, it would update itself. So realistically, you'll be doing around 450, maybe 500 if you guys are really efficient and you're doing mostly highway driving. That's where this engine is going to do the best because of the CVT programming. The 25 engine is not that more thirsty. So you'll lose basically on M one MPG according to the EPA. EPA. I'll retest that when I have one for a full week and we'll see what we can actually get. But as a long distance highway car, this is excellent from the long range, from the comfortable driving experience. Although I will say that on the highway, when you're looking to pass people, this is where you have to basically m mat your foot like three quarters of the way down to get any kind of acceleration because of the lack of torque from this two liter. And that's probably an area where if you guys want, if you guys plan to do more highway driving, I would highly recommend the 2.5 for its extra power. Could Subaru, should Subaru bring back the plug-in hybrid or a hybrid version? Absolutely. I'm not entirely sure why they're kind of dragging their feet in that regard. This is the best-selling vehicle in the segment. The Corolla Cross Hybrid, I imagine, is going to end up stealing some sales from the Crosstrek because it is one of the only vehicles in the segment that is truly electrified. So after spending a full week with the fully redesigned 2024 Subaru Crosstrek, it's pretty obvious that the company didn't want to mess too much with the successful formula that is the Crosstrek. I mean, when you have 155,000 sales every year, you don't want to change too much or it really annoys a lot of your core buyers. And I think Subaru did a really great job. They essentially improved on the essential things. The ride quality is good. The interior quietness is good. This vehicle feels a lot more refined. It's an easier car to live with on a day-to-day -day basis and it's also an excellent highway companion. While it's not the sportiest driving vehicle, it has very competent handling dynamics. The technology in the vehicle has been improved with that standard 11.6 inch display in this trim. It's one of the reasons why I highly recommend spending the extra 1200 bucks to go to the premium trim. The back seat has plenty of room. The cargo area is usable. The off-road capability, which I showed you guys in my first video, is also really unexpected. It's unexpectedly good. And in terms of the acceleration, as much as I want to rag on this vehicle for doing an over nine seconds zero to 60 time. The truth of the matter is in most of my real world driving, except for on the highway and I'm looking to pass a slow moving vehicle, this car had more than enough power to do so. If you guys plan to do more highway driving or towing usage perhaps, I would highly recommend the 2.5 liter engine. But really where Subaru falls short is the fact that there's no electrified option. I mean, they have Toyota as a partner. They could easily do a hybrid version of this vehicle borrowing Toyota's tech. And I hope that they eventually do bring back a hybrid because I think that it's a market that Subaru could easily tap and they may actually see sales of the Crosstrek drop slightly because the Corolla Cross Hybrid kind of fills that void. But if you guys are looking to get your hands on this Crosstrek, remember these models here, the two liters are built in Japan and they start at just under 25 grand for the base, 24,995, which includes all wheel drive. I highly recommend spending the extra 1200 to go to the premium. You've got different wheels, you'll get LED fog lights, you'll get the bigger 11.6 inch display, you'll get the upgraded sound system, them. And you can also option in the sunroof and the blind spot monitoring. You also get the rear seat air vents, or I'm sorry, the rear seat armrest that folds down. So it's kind of no brainer to spend $26,200 for the premium. My tester with destination and that $2,300 option package that includes the blind spot and the sunroof comes in at just under $30,000. $29,600 is a reasonable amount of money, especially when you consider how expensive everything is. However, just keep in mind for an extra $2,800, you could step it up to the sport trim, uh, which will include the bigger 2.5 engine, 18 inch wheels, a slightly different look on the outside and the interior. And then for those of you who want everything, the limited trim is going to be about 34.9 fully loaded with basically all the options. You could also skip the embedded GPS uh, and save yourself like 800 bucks. I probably would do so, but really a fully loaded cross check at around 33,000, 34,000 is kind of a steal. And to me at that price point, it's no surprise why this continues to be one of the most popular vehicles in the segment. And of course in Subaru's lineup. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Premium. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.